Yep. So there we go. So those are the highlights. And uh, of course, first of all, the question here being, uh, first of all, good result, fantastic result mm. from a United point of view. Yes. Yes. They 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 wanted, uh, you know, the way you the way they needed the Liverpool win back last year yeah. mm -hmm. when they needed something to jump start their season yes. now they needed a win mm -hmm. to show that we belong in this top four conversation top yes. three conversation yeah even and i think this was it even the title we'll get to the title yes. conversation i'm not convinced about the title mm -hmm. conversation but mm -hmm. we'll get to that mm -hmm. but for them such a big big win but of course the we I'm, I'm actually trying to figure out how do we start maybe we start with talking about the united before we get on to or do we talk about city first and say mm -hmm what has gone wrong what is that that has gone so wrong with city in the last few weeks wow there are so many talking points mm. first mm -hmm. of all uh the Haaland effect mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's uh it's more or less like uh city were toothless in their first half you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh when uh, when you look at uh how they played the game the way uh united uh tactically uh played against them because uh Eric Ten Hag knew so well that most of the most of the goals that uh, Haaland scores scores mm -hmm. come from uh, mainly KDB. Yes. So what he made sure was Fred man marked KDB throughout the game, mm. and it worked to some point. Up to some point. No, it worked because it worked. Yeah. he kept him quiet for the most game. Yeah, mm -hmm. it worked. Yeah. Till the second half. Mm. And then, then again, uh, you look at um, in the midfield. United made sure that whenever City got the ball in the midfield, they tried to press them back to their they have so yes. it mm. made it so hard for city to progress forward you know yeah. making the likes of Foden and uh Maris uh kind of isolated in the game that's why uh Foden was uh subbed in the second half so as to uh, to us so as to give uh the likes of uh Grealish uh those uh he's he's a kind of player who can carry the ball throughout from the midfield up to the final third of the game and it kind of worked out for them Mm. And I'd say uh, it was a tactical ma masterclass for Eric Ten Hag. Yeah, in the and first I think half. yeah, maybe to add on on the ha the Haaland, the Haaland beat. I think what Haaland has done for for City currently is make them predictable. It, when you make when when teams now know how you play, because when when City used to play with a, with a false nine, the play, the game could come from the wings. Yeah. it goes from the midfield. You couldn't really predict where the ball is going on who is going to, to touch the next touch or how the ball is going. So now. I think teams now have started to know how City play. City in KDB, the ball goes to KDB. KDB tries to ping. So when you block KDB from pinging that ball, you necessarily you just make you make sort of make Haaland you useless or you make them him not do anything in the game. So I think the the way he has said uh, on that game as well, mm. that is what he what what United did. They in the first half especially, they just frustrated City. They packed the midfield. I think uh, Ten Hag learned. When they lost 6-3, he learned, you know, I need to, to do something. So his midfield was really packed. So him, everybody, I think, in that midfield was man-marked. So the balls were not moving. City were not comfortable. And the moment you don't make City comfortable, they get frustrated. When they don't have the ball as much as they want to do something with it, yeah. they get frustrated. I, I think Ten Hag's main strategy was mm. don't try and stop Haaland try and stop the supply right. to Haaland. Supply, yeah. exactly. The idea was don't yes. try and defend. Don't try and sit at the edge of your box mm, and defend them, mm. but put put a strong base in midfield. To yes. You disrupt it before it starts. Yeah. Yes. And when the game started, I tweeted <clears throat> and I said United have gone with ballast in midfield. Mm. Like United went with men in midfield. Yeah. They, they This whole thing of Ericsson playing as a as an 8, they refused. Mm. They, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. You go play as a 10 yeah. because he's not good. In, currently, Ericsson isn't isn't great enough to play as a ten. Yes, yes. But he can. He's much more useful as an eight, eight and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they had two sixes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what that does, you kill the space. So Casemiro and Fred. Fred yes. had one job, yes, and Fred is one of those players who <laughs> relishes uh, doing the 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 dirty work so yes, to speak work. like yes. the hard work the 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 unglamorous jobs mm. yeah. that's that's what he seems to thrive mm. in so he seemed he enjoyed the fact that i am going to chase kdb all the way to the loo if i have to exactly. but i'm going to make sure i stick with him mm. casemiro does his mopping up thing and then ericsson's main job was to sit on rodri yeah mm. so mm. they couldn't start off with rodri because he was always on him yes. so he sort of started he stopped the, the he stopped it before the attack starts, like mm. right at the source is why he tried to stop it. Exactly. Yeah. Because when I saw Luke Shaw 
at center back i wondered look sure at center back mm. wouldn't they wouldn't haland go to Haaland his side all the time yeah. Yeah. but then he knew we are going to stop it in, in the midfield before yeah, yeah. Ifike uko yeah. yes. and then when we stop it that way city don't seem to have a second city don't seem to have a plan b which is really odd mm. because you would think for a team that was so unpredictable when they played with the front six exactly. when they had sterling mares bernardo silva kdb mm. gundogan you didn't know where the ball was going yes. now you are very sure at some point they will try and swing and it in speed, the box yes. yeah. so if you try and cut off then it becomes easier so i feel like they become a bit predictable mm. also they've just looked off mm. versus yeah, southampton sure. they never look like scoring mm. yes yes they, a week ago yeah, they, they never looked shot, like scoring they didn't have a shot on target on they the they never ever looked like scoring and mm. i get almost get the feeling what is it the hangover of the world cup because they had the second highest number yes. of players at the yeah. world cup mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But even before the World Cup, if you go back from the start of the season, they've had great games like the United one, yeah. mm. but there haven't been many. Yeah. City mm. have, uh, but, but traditionally again, City starts slow. If you if you think throughout this, yeah, they yeah. start slow. They but they mm. just haven't had too many marquee games. Games where you've seen, hey, this team is is maybe the Chelsea game recently, yes, yes. Uh, mm. the midweek game, maybe the United game. Mm. But you feel like there's just something. Maybe the Haaland factor isn't settling in as quickly as and as smoothly as we thought it, it, it would yes. and also maybe they just need to and this is so bad for a team that spends gazillions of dollars every year mm. but maybe they need to refresh mm. maybe just maybe they need to refresh yeah maybe they just need to look at the team and and infuse a few things now i understand why he likes lewis at yeah. right back because yeah, yeah, yeah. mm-hmm. he's young and he's fresh energetic now exactly now yeah. you have cancello and kyle yeah. walker maybe you just yeah. get to feeling that maybe they are looking to and also uh, you might sit back and think ah, they don't they don't have their two first choice center backs as well yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. because ake and akanji sorry no offense but uh nah, mm-hmm. nah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not yeah, diaz yeah, and laporte. laporte it's not exactly. diaz laporte or stones yeah. again i understood why he went with with maybe part of the reason why he went with them but they are not the top guys yeah mm-hmm. i I, I thought Gundogan. I thought Gundogan. Yeah. I thought maybe Gundogan kind of game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should have started the game because he's more or less he likes to feel to be in, around the midfield. So yes. He could he mm-hmm. could have kind of uh, maybe uh, distracted the other midfielders, the likes of Eriksen. Yes. Yeah. And uh, made uh, the passes into the final third inch perfect for the for the likes of Haaland, Foden and Maris. Mm. I just feel like Gundogan maybe his quality is better. Yeah. I also have a fight or have a disagreement when with whenever they play KDB and, and Bernardo Silva, Silva. Yeah. Yeah. it's True. always tricky. You have to place them in different positions. Yeah. Yes, I feel yes. when you play Bernardo as a wide right wide left kind of guy, mm-hmm. it works mm-hmm. better when KDB is on the team. Yeah. But when they both sit in midfield, so you have Rodri and then you have uh, KDB, KDB and, 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 and Silva and right in front it almost much. doesn't always exactly yeah. Yeah. feels like it's too much so I just felt like uh, I feel maybe Pep also over tried to because he's looking for control no yeah. he's yes. looking for control it's the one thing City haven't been very very good at this season yeah. in control of games throughout mm-hmm. so he felt like he was looking to control the game mm-hmm. and then it just went away mm. I, I don't know it's, yeah there's something that is off about, about City. City I yeah. remember him saying he w- he wanted a monopoly over the ball so he can kind of control when when to attack and when not to attack when to defend mm-hmm. and when not to defend because uh, like he always says uh, he's a uh, he's a uh, he always likes to say that when you have the ball it's the best kind of way to defend yes mm, yes yeah yeah so i, I something just feels off with city a little thing there a big thing there if something yeah, just feels off yeah, with yeah, city as well, they look like a team also in transition sort of you have now the the old the Laporte uh, the Laporte Diaz and KDB they are sort of well. aging now yeah. and then now you're bringing now the younger players Akanji Ake you're trying now to fit them to the team but they are not yet there what they have but you're trying now to you know so yeah. i think they are also a team in transition as well kidogo and then now probably now the world cup thing probably they are still hungover or tired but uh, yeah, it's there's something is amiss there. They just don't look like City. And, and um, a friend of mine says, you know what? City have set such high standards that when they drop a little bit, everyone yeah, complains well. because yeah, victim yeah, of yeah, their true. own success. Yeah. So, well. but, but I don't know. They just feel like they're off it. Anyway, when we come back, we focus on the other side of Manchester. We've spoken about what we think about City. When we come back, we talk about United. We find out what do you think went right, what do you think went wrong, and mm. then we get onto the offside because there there is a million and one offside specialists <laughs> as we speak. 